Uh, Welcome back, everybody. We are here with another edition of the Commissioner's Podcast. I'm your host and commissioner, Zach McLaughlin, and with me always is the world-renowned Will Martin. What a day to be recording, boys. Welcome back. Let's get to it. Yes, so what are we talking about today, Zach? Well, you know, as we know, we got the draft coming up. We are officially under a week until the live draft at Top Golf Centennial. Be there at 8.30. Um, it's going to be a great party. We're going to have a lot of fun. Um, but like I said, we're a week away. A um, couple of reminders that I wanted to give out to the league before uh, we get the season actually started. A um, couple of rules and guidelines for everybody. A couple of new guys in the league. A couple of guys that may need to be reminded. Uh, pay your league. Pay your league fee. All right. We pay for the money. All right. We want the bragging rights. We want the trophy. But we play for the money. So do your part. Pay up. Okay. Um, you have until December 1st to pay that. If it's after December 1st, it's considered late. And there's, there, you're, you're liable for some punishments, all right? Ooh. We're not just playing around. This is a legit league here, okay? And if you break the rules, you will be punished, okay? So keep that in mind. And what one of those punishments is every day the money's late, an extra dollar's added on? Correct, yeah. So if, you, so if you pay December 11th, that's 10 days late. That's a $10 additional fine that you need to pay. Um, just as a, you know, it, we got to keep it fair for everybody. Everybody does their part. They, they pay their fees early, and, and we already got some rolling in, so that's really good. Um, so pay it. I understand $50 may not be doable right now, but you should be able to do it at some point. So make it a priority if you want to be in the league. Yeah, so if any of y'all are Scrooge McDucks, be expected to get Scrooge McFucked on the uh, <laughs> penalties. Exactly. All right. A um, couple other things. If you lose the regular season, you are our regular season loser. You will need to do the punishment, okay? Will Martin here Hi, is that's taking me. his loss gracefully. Um, From he's two doing years his ago. punishment. Like we talked about last episode, bring in those uh, those requests. We want to see Will in some, some cute outfits, and we're trying to we're trying to see what he can do. You know, and uh, I don't know. It's just we already have a couple great ideas. We got some coconut bras and uh, yep. a luau, and we got some. Uh, yeah, month of August is already taken care yeah. of, so you're gonna see me in December a coconut well. bra. December's oh, coming. and December as well. Will's Oof. gonna be a, a sexy little uh, dog sledder for us. He's yeah. gonna be, you know, taking control of some huskies and, and, and what's that race called? In Alaska, you know them. Uh, uh, the one that Balto face face saves from everybody or something. I don't know the Alaskan bobsled race. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. It, it's been so long it's since something. I've seen that movie. But uh, he's gonna be really good in those uh, in the ski mask for sure. All I can say is mush. A <laughs> uh, couple other things. Um, don't cheat. Right. We have a no cheating clause. If you're cheating, it's an automatic ban from the league. Um, well, cheating now. Well, now it is. Yeah. Will instead it, it, before it was a punishment. Hi again, me. Yep. Um, no colluding. Don't be don't be scheming behind the league's back trying to maneuver some things around. And trades. if you do, just don't get caught. That too. Don't get caught. Don't be so obvious <laughs> and um, blatant with it. Um, pretty easy to find out when you're talking about it in the group chat. But yeah, come on now. You're grown ass men. Be better. Exactly. Exactly. Well, I'm glad you've grown up the last couple. Exactly. <laughs> uh, let's see what else did I have for you guys. Um, oh, that's it. That's it. Those are the three rules. Pay your fee. Wait, uh, hold do on now. Lose your punishment and, and don't uh, cheat. No, and there's one more thing. Oh, what else we got? Bring for the draft. Bring ah. in your ideas for the draft punishment. I mean, for the league punishment itself. Mm -hmm. Yep. So I've already got my idea ready to go. I know Zach. I has... I have a pretty good one. All right. I'm pretty good, excited good. about it. So it's going to be fun. I want to. I hope mine gets picked. Yeah, and uh, just look forward later on uh, to the episode of that later uh, in the season, boys. Yeah. It's going to be a fun one, and I can't wait to vote on whoever will end up losing. And hopefully, <laughs> God forbid, it's not either of us. Be creative. Yeah, absolutely. It won't be. Yeah, I, no. I know that. But be creative. Be creative. Bring some fun stuff to the table. That's what makes this league fun, is we bring some cool things, we bring, bring some exciting things. So don't be a cookie cutter guy. And, and, and let's, we can toe the line of what's appropriate and what's not, but let's let's know where the line is and let's not go make any, anybody do something crazy or something Like having illegal. to fly you know half, like all over the country. Yeah, let's not make it to where we gotta get a bus ticket to Alabama or something, you know what I mean? Or, like, let's just yeah. keep it in regional. Let's keep it regional. 
you know, in like the Colorado that. area. I like that. Nah, or, you know, just move to Kansas and spend a month there, or, you know, lifetime <laughs> Clint. Yeah, yeah, that's a punishment enough, isn't it? Exactly, right? yeah. <laughs> um, all right, so now we've got all that out of the way, let's talk about the league, the greatest league in the world, the Globs Daycare. And we're right around the corner, Will. We're yeah. right around the corner from yeah, just the greatest season um, in all sports. You know, and, and yes, it's not real, per se, but... You could say it's exciting. fantasy. It's very exciting. Yeah. Uh, I look forward to football season every year now, especially that I'm in a league like this, or just I've grown to love football more, even college football. So something yeah. like this, it, it gets me hype, ready to go. It yeah, should, you should be feeling exciting. the same way, boys. Yep. We're right there. We are on the cusp of it. And you guys all saw the, the preview I sent on Snapchat of the trophy. It is in... It, it is beautiful. Will, you got to you got to see it today. Ooh. He Will is the, me and Will are the only two people to see the trophy in its full um full form. So you guys are going to be excited. It's definitely worth, you know, putting your best effort to win and have it for a year um and get your name up on the on the on the champions, the champion list, um it's... which only th two names are on there, myself and Spencer Bradbury, but yeah. Bums. Um they're my our names are lonely. So step up your guys' game. Yeah, it'd be kind of horrid if their yeah. names were the only ones on there for the rest of uh, our lives. So, yeah. from the end of it. from mine to all of you boys, get it together. Let's be better. Yeah. So on top of that, I mentioned you know the payouts, the fees, and stuff. So I just wanted to give you guys the rundown of how the payouts work this year. Okay. So first place will be getting three hundred fifteen dollars. Second place is seventy, and then third place is thirty five. The reason why it's not um, I know you guys are paying $50 to get in, and we're used to third place getting their money back. However, $15 is taken from you guys' league this year, or your fee this year, to pay for the trophy, because it's going to be a league property thing. I didn't want, I wanted all of us to have a stake in it, um, so that we all have like a, you know, a, a vested interest in winning the trophy, and it's not just, you know, the commissioners or... Yeah, kind of like how the Green Bay Packers <laughs> do their... Uh stock holding with the fans exactly something like that yeah exactly yeah. yeah i wanted everyone to have a little bit of stake in it um to stick around and, and make this league a long-term thing so that's how the payouts are rolling out um as we kind of get further into the the dynasty of the league you know the payouts will get higher because we won't have to buy as we know we don't have one trophy now so we don't have to keep buying a trophy every year so that'll be easier um plus if you if you if you incur any fines throughout the year as a punishment That'll, that'll be added to the winner's total as well. So if you pay late, you pay your five bucks, your five days late on the on the fee, you pay that, that five bucks will be added to the the, the winner's pool. Ooh, I like so. that. So if some of you are a little stingy with your money, no, keep it up, let's uh, let the winner have yeah, yeah. their moment. Yeah, yeah. Keep it up, like, feed my pockets. I love to your guys pockets. money. Yeah, I'm gonna win, I, I know. It. Yeah, okay, whatever. And as we lead up to the draft, let's talk about some of our sleepers, some of our busts. Um, not necessarily players that we're drafting, but members of our league that we think just aren't very good. Yeah. And versus guys that we think that are sleepers and are good. good I agree. Good. Like uh, going off of uh, how some of y'all were uh, not very happy with the uh, power rankings that came out. Which, by the way, all we have to say is if you don't like sucking, do better. <laughs> exactly. I mean, literally. I mean, you don't like the power rankings, but I mean, it was honest. It we was. came out, we were honest. I mean, I, I had an honest opinion of myself. You know what I mean? Yeah, I was ranked number two, and I talked very highly of myself, but... I mean, that's because you finished when second. You, when your flowers are flowers, you got to give them your flowers. Exactly. If and that makes sense. It was based off of last year's uh, overall standings, so if you didn't like it, do better this year. Exactly. That's all I got to say. I will try and do better myself, or I could do worse, and I'll drop next year, which happens. <laughs> and let's, let's be honest, this is the most unbiased show. Uh, on YouTube, on whatever you're watching, um, let's just get that out of the way. I am, I am the commissioner of the league, but I am very unbiased, and I think Will will attest to that. He is, but I'm not. There you have it. There you have it. Um, so I'm here. My my sleeper. I think you guys all know that I love Remy. I think Remy's going to be a great competitor. But my sleeper is one of the new guys. All right, and I do oh, got to no. give my cousin a shout out. Oh, no. He's a good player. I played with him before. Clay Armstrong, he is a solid, solid player. I think he's going to have a good draft. And he's, he's just a savvy vet. I think he's got a savvy vet. I think he's an easy lock for the playoffs. And I think he's definitely one of the biggest competitors that we have coming in. Well, yeah, I mean, um, 
you gain more wisdom as you age, and Clint being, like you said, the designated AARP member of the group, I I would agree that he's got some wisdom behind his belt and mm -hmm. uh, fancy experience, so... Uh, Definitely. So, Clint, good on you for being the old guy and knowing a lot more about fantasy than some of us, but, you know, we hope to see in the playoffs this year, so best of luck. Exactly. And, yeah. So, so well, who do you think, who do you have as somebody that's maybe a little overrated, maybe somebody that's... Uh, not as talented as maybe their records show. I know you got a name in, in your head, but let's I'm just not gonna talk No, about it. I'm not gonna say it because we all know who I want to say, and I'm not gonna say it because. Are you scared because maybe you have a week one matchup with them? I do. Actually? I don't know if oh, this, I don't God. know if the schedule is official yet on the, on uh, the app, but you may have a, a week one. Spencer Middleman matchup. Spencer Middleman matchup, which is probably one of the biggest matchups of the season, and to have it right away, or right off the bat. No, I know. Uh, I mean, right what draft. you were fourth in power rankings last year. I mean, you you got lucky on some games. I know one of the games where we played each other, you won by no less than five points, I believe. But let's be real. Come on now, it you got lucky that weekend. It won't happen again this year. I love to hear that. Trash yeah, talk. Well, exactly. I love I'm, to hear it. Nah, but so I mean, you think Spencer Middleman's a little overrated is what you were saying? A little saying. overrated, yeah. But, I mean, can I say somebody who's perfectly rated? Yeah, I will. Yeah. Marcus, dog, come on now, buddy. <laughs> like, you, you talked all that shit last year at the draft, and look how much it came back to bite you in the ass. Uh, like, I I see the potential there, bud, but I, I'm not exactly seeing the results. So, I mean, yeah, you had a good first year, but this last year just showed that you don't got what it takes, dog. Yeah. Uh, with Middleman, don't 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 think I don't see your name on fantasy football <laughs> as Nick Chubb's, you know, nickname with Nick Chubb, okay? I see it. He changed it. And I saw that you changed it, but just know I know where your head's at and I know for a fact that I will be trading for Nick Chubb at some point this season. So Or, you know, just trade picks and draft him. Well, I don't think that, I, I I don't think that'd be collusion, just trading picks. Well, trading picks is one thing, but then you have to trade picks for the whole draft. No, you just got to trade for, like, a first round. Like, I tried, I will admit, I tried to get Hunter to trade his first round pick for my first round pick as long as I got naming rights for his team. And uh, did he take that deal or not? He was close, man. He he thought about it, but he I told him why I was going to name his team, and he immediately said no. Well, yeah. I think we can all agree Will does have some of the most blasphemous names on fantasy football. I mean, Broken T last year was good, but it was kind I of mean, set up on a T, if you will. I mean, I had T Higgins, so... Yeah, he was broken all year. He was, but he still got me over 1,000 yards, so it don't matter. That's true. Yeah. Um, let's see, Will. All right, well, let's talk some more about what we think is going to happen in the draft. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, I mean, who do you think is a lock for the first overall pick uh, for Mr. Kyle Tolley? I mean, I think it's got to be one or two players. I I kind of agree with that. I think it'll be one player because of the results that they put up last year. Yeah, I think Justin Jefferson. Oh, no doubt. It's, it's no going to be J.J. Yeah. Um, you just look at his framework. He's so good. He's just very talented. They force feed him the ball out there in Minnesota. There's yeah. not really a bona fide number two um, receiver. They don't have a good running game. Um, not anymore. Their defense is, is pretty terrible. Um, they had one of the worst defenses in the league last year. Um, and so, yet they're still going to finish second in that division. Yeah, they definitely are. But a lot of that is to just Justin Jefferson being just an absolute animal. And no, I know. But, I mean, look at the wide receivers that LSU produces. you got him, Jamar Chase. Yeah. I mean, just, well, just look at uh, the SEC in general, like mm -hmm. with them in Alabama, Alabama. Producing some of the best wide receivers we see in the game today. So. Yeah, but you can't sleep on Ohio State, though. Shut up. <laughs> One good receiver. You can't sleep on those Buckeyes. One, One good, good receiver. One good receiver. There was which one, one, which one are you talking about? Because there's one JSN. Other one. Okay, well, the, the, did they not just get in it? Did Garrett Wilson not just win offensive rookie of the year? Oh, I forgot he went there. My bad. Whatever. And yeah. Scary Terry's all right, I guess. And Scary Terry's a machine, too. Yeah, but yeah, too bad he plays for the Commanders. Yeah, that's very unfortunate for him. And no no, no disrespect to Sam Howell, but the quarterback situation. No, it's going to be Jake Fromm, bro. Jake Fromm. Yeah, Jake that's Fromm, Stay Farm. Jake Fromm. Is no bueno. Jake I'll from the bottom of the division. All right. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think Justin Jefferson. We got a little sidetrack there. Jefferson Jefferson's going number one. The only other option I could see is maybe a Christian McCaffrey, if for whatever reason Kyle does want to go running back 
in that first round. I could see it, but I could also see him taking Jamar Chase because those two are two. They are undoubtedly the two best receivers in the league right now. Yeah, I think definitely Chase is not getting out of the top three. He's, oh, no doubt. He's got so much potential with him and Joe Burrow. And yeah, I mean, Joe Burrow being them. hurt right now, but that's not a big issue. Yeah, and I think that's the good thing is that they have so much chemistry already, you know, being at LSU, being yep. – two years together already in the league they don't need those preseason reps as much as you know some of these other teams that have no and they got that good chemistry and exactly. jamar was an lsu guy too right he was yeah so and like burrow yep. being his college quarterback as well like they've got that just a college connection as well so what three years uh, together to learn how yeah. the other person mm -hmm. uh thinks and works on the field man that that's just solid at what the Bengals have done with that and i it sucks that's in your division though sorry bud yeah, you know, the, the AFC North, it's just a gauntlet. It is. It's just ish. a gauntlet, and you got the Steelers, who are just happen to be Garbage. good every year. Somehow. I hate them with my whole heart, but you got to give them their, their props when they're due, and Mike Tomlin's just a hell of a coach. I know, they steal a winner from you guys every year. Absolutely, it's pretty sad, and um, let's change the topic before we get into it. Yeah, sorry, but no, all right, so. I hate the Steelers. I know, so uh, number one, I got to go Jay Jets. Jay Jets. Yeah. And then Jamar Chase, number two. Mm -hmm. Who do you, th uh, for Cade, who do you think Dylan takes with third? Because at this point, you got to go running back. I think, yeah. I mean, and I think it'll be Christian McCaffrey. I think he's just, that offense in San Francisco, it's so centered around the run game. And with Elijah Mitchell still dealing with injuries through preseason and, and yeah. camp, McCaffrey's going to be the workhorse. He is. But and, if uh, if Mitchell comes back, you're going to see a lot more uh, uh targets uh, for yeah and that's McCaffrey as gonna, a receiver he's gonna have so many receptions out of the backfield I know well I mean he's a slot back so it makes a lot of sense that yeah. he just a is able to run the ball and catch he's gonna be he's gonna be a touchdown producer he's gonna yep. get a lot of receiving uh, opportunities and he's gonna he's gonna be able to run the ball too that it's great old line great run scheme there yeah and uh you know speaking of slot uh backs mm -hmm. I think with the fourth overall Hunter goes Eckler Hunter goes Eckler, you think? I like Dude, that because... That, Eckler's a dog. One, Colorado native, and Hunter loves the, like guys that uh, yeah. have like yeah. either come out of Colorado or grown up here like just for sports in general. Yeah. He's a homer. And he's a homer. He, he's just a great all-around athlete over in uh, L.A. And he's yeah. been a guy that is a top 10 pick in fantasy every year. Like He gets hurt every now and then, but he still produces. Yeah, he's definitely the workhorse there in he is. L.A., absolutely. I mean, yeah, but, I mean, you look at the wide receiver room, too. But yeah, he they, is he's the guy, though. Mm -hmm. Like, he is Justin Herbert's guy right They're now. They're a very good passing attack. The, yep. rushing, the rushing attack isn't great, but when you have a guy like Eckler that's so shifty. And he's he a can, dual threat, he just like McCaffrey. He can do a bunch of things like that, exactly. Yeah. Um, they're going to force feed him. They're going to force feed him, especially at the goal line. Uh, I mean, he's scored more touchdowns than any person in in, in football in the last couple of years, I believe. So yeah. he's a touchdown machine. So if you get some health from him, he's going to come up big for you, 30-point performances, stuff like that, a lot. Oh, yeah. And that, that comes to the fifth pick. And I know I feel like he's going to go Nick Chubb, but there's a lot of really good options on the board that he may, you know, sway from that. Um, you got Cooper Cup Hill, Tyreek Hill there, um, B. John Robinson, Travis Kelsey, Saquon Barkley, all those guys are there. And Patrick Pat Mahomes. Yeah, you know. We could see a quarterback in the first round. We very could. I mean, I had Pat Mahomes last year. Absolute monster. Won me a lot of games. Scored a lot of points. He doesn't yeah. turn the ball over. Which is unfortunate. He's going to throw less than 10 picks. He's going to maybe fumble a couple times, but he's going to get you rushing yards. He's going to get you rushing touchdowns. And he's just going to freaking gonna light score. up the scoreboard with touchdowns and passing yards. He's a lock. At, I think he's going to be but number the QB1. I know that maybe... People are leaning more towards a Jalen Hurts or Josh Allen because of the, the rushing upside, but when you're so good passing wise. Yeah. There's not a single defense that really holds Mahomes under 300 passing yards. There's just not. No, there isn't. And I mean, Denver is the best bet because they see him so often, and Denver's you know usually a pretty good defensive team. But even then, it's Mahomes feeds off of the AFC West. It's just it's he's just a different quarterback, and it's it's pretty obvious that he's just another level above everybody else. So I think he's I think he's key back one. It just depends on if you're willing to pass up on a, a position player. Um, yeah. Maybe I, th I think he'd probably go a little later um, yeah. just because with Cooper Cup, Tyreek no, Hill, 
some of these running backs. Yeah, but I mean, who? Let's get in the mind of Middleman. Who do you think he does go? I. That's like, a scary thing to be in this mind of Middleman. I'll oh be God. Honest with you. Um, I'm already going crazy. <laughs> but you just, I mean, here's the thing, right? We we've, we've made the comparison. He's like a Kirk Cousins. So when the lights are on at the live draft, and everyone's looking to see what he does next, he's gonna fumble. He may make the wrong pick. Yeah. He could panic. He could overdraft somebody. He could very well just take the safe pick and take a Cooper Cup. Or he could go Tyree Kill. Or he could go Tyree Kill. Or he can go something crazy. Maybe take like a a, 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 a Tony Patrick Pollard or something. No, I, I feel like he would go like one of four picks. He would go Kelsey, mm-hmm. Hill, Cup, or Mahomes. Or Mahomes. Or one Mahomes. of those four picks. Well, I would certainly love for him not to take Nick Chubb. I know. Uh, I mean, um, he could just because of that, just yeah. to piss you and off. And since you really like Tyreek Hill here no, in no, this no, draft, no. I don't think he drops to you. I think, I think Remy, Remy will dog me for that. Remy's going to dog you there. He will dog me for um, that one, which, uh, Remy, so, just know I know where you live. I can easily gain access to your new place mm-hmm. of living and ruin your life. So remember that before you uh, decide to take Tyreek Hill. That is, um, that is a promise, not a threat. <laughs> Hopefully the FBI is not watching. No, right. God, no. Um, um, so, Will, I mean, if, if Tyree Kill's not there, where are you thinking? I got to go with, uh, if he's available, Travis Kelsey, man. Travis Kelsey, yeah. I, mean, I got it. He is uh, Mahomes' number one target. He uh, is mm-hmm. the best tight end in the entire league. Yeah. Puts up 1,000-plus uh, yards, 10-plus uh, touchdowns every year. Like, I, they don't really have a good receiver core in Kansas City, but that doesn't yeah. matter. They're still going to finish top of the division because of those two workhorses in Mahomes and Kelsey. Yeah, I mean, Kelsey is just unguardable. He's a Especially different Especially by a linebacker or a safety. you got to get your best corner out there. And even then, you know, watch the film. He puts Denzel Ward through the cycle <laughs> several times. Um, so good coverage does yeah. not is not good coverage on Travis Kelsey. He gets open whenever he wants, and, and Mahomes is looking for him. Yeah. They don't need a top-tier wide receiver. That's why they let Tyreek Hill walk, because they have Travis Kelsey and they have Mahomes. He can make some of these lesser-known guys, Kadarius Tony, Marquez, Valdez, Scantling. He can make some of those guys a little bit No, better. he can make them into elite receivers. Exactly. You see that like in other sports like with other teams, mm-hmm. like uh, LeBron making uh, some of his teammates uh, yeah. look I mean, unbelievable. Look at, look at his... Uh, his first run to the NBA Finals. Oh, here we go. Um, he dragged probably the worst team ever to go to a Finals, to a Finals. Granted, he did lose in that Finals, but it's because he had the team. I mean, he had Big Z and, as a center. Yeah. And that, I mean, don't get me wrong. I love Big Z, but Big still. Z, but come on. I mean, yeah, it's the come same on. It's the same the effect San Antonio with, Spurs, the it's Dynasty the, Spurs. No, it's the same effect with Mahomes. Exactly. He, he makes everyone around him better. And, and God forbid. Oh, I hate that. Man, it, it's tough. You know, we do have a lot of Broncos fans in here, so it's Me tough included. to hear Mahomes, you know, glory talk. But, I mean, it, he it really, hurts. at the end of the day, is, 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 is He's so the best good. QB in the league right now, and God, I hate saying that. Yeah, that's tough. So you go Kelsey. Bradbury, Bradbury is a wild card because Bradbury very well could maybe take, I don't know, Calvin Ridley here, Trevor Lawrence. Which Jags player is I don't going to be drafted he, no, 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 no. I don't think he – I, I got to go – that's the question. I that think. that is a real question, but I don't think he goes a Jags player in the first round. No, I, I, think I think he follows second the round, trend. One hundred percent, absolutely. He's taken either Travis Etienne or or Calvin Ridley. I think. I think. I think he loves his Jags players so much. I honestly think he goes Christian Kirk second round. Christian Kirk. Wow. Yeah. Wow. But first round, I think he follows the trend. And do we see him take somebody like Derrick Henry? With his first pick, uh, running back like that, yeah. he may be a division opponent, but he's going to be carrying that entire Titans mm-hmm. offense. Because let's be real, just because they have DeAndre Hopkins doesn't mean he's going to see many targets. Like wide receivers go to die in Tennessee. Yeah, and I mean, look at the quarterback. I mean, you have Ryan Tannehill, Ooh. savvy vet, yeah. who's who's been okay. Yeah, but he's going to slide to the number two. Malik Willis has already been given that Malik starting Willis spot. Malik Willis is there, but he hasn't proven himself. He hasn't done much in the preseason to, sh- to no. really turn heads. But as then again, as the offensive line. Starter. Yeah, but that then again, the offensive line is just god-awful in Tennessee. Yeah. 
The thing is, Tennessee does have a stout defense. They're they gonna, do. They're going to play the run game. They're going to play the defensive game. They're not trying to air it out. Um, you you wonder if they go Will Levis at some point in the year. I yeah, I see them doing that just to, to get him the reps mm-hmm. and prepare him to be the QB of the future. Quite the quite quite the quarterback triangle there with Tannehill, Levis, and yeah. and, and, and uh, Willis, just because two really young guys, yeah, pretty high high touted prospects at least for the most part, and then you got Tannehill, who's probably the most solid out of the three as of now because he's got all the NFL experience, but yeah. I mean, Derrick Henry definitely is still a top 10 pick. I think he's yeah one of the best running backs in the league, if not in the history of the game. Yeah. Um, just a power speed combo that's just been unseen of a, of a man that size. It's oh, insane. for sure. But I mean, we could also see the lines of Bradbury being like, no, he's a division rival. I don't care how good he is. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to draft him. So if that's the case, who do you see him go with? You know, it depends. If he goes, running if he back. wants to go running back, Maybe he can go as Bijan. I could see him taking a, a, a risk on Bijan at this at this point. Maybe he goes Barkley. Um, he could also go Stefan Diggs. Yeah. Stefan Diggs, I think he's primed for a big year as well. I think he's a really good good target in the first round. Um, it just depends on if he wants running back or if he wants wide receiver. No, no doubt. Uh, I mean, either way, you got good choices with that. Like, Stefan is the number one receiver in Buffalo. He's going to carry that team yeah. to a, another division title. Him, oh, oh, no faith in Aaron Rodgers and the Jets. Is that none at all. Oh wow. Okay. None Hot at all. take. Clip that. Clip that for Will. <laughs> um, Aaron, let, tag Aaron Rodgers in that. Um, but okay, I mean, sorry he, to he you. won't. No, you're fine. I mean, but I mean, you just look at the dynasty the Bills are building, mm-hmm. and they got good players. So like for Josh Allen to have him and Gabe Davis, that's a solid one and yeah. two. But Diggs is definitely gonna go first round in. No matter, I mean, where he goes in the first round, no idea. But for him to be mm-hmm. able to like produce the numbers he has for whatever team that gets him, good on yeah. you, man. Absolutely. Yeah. Clint, Clint, here this next pick. I have no idea. He's probably. I know he's going to go probably best player available. Yeah. Um, Which could be, that be whether Cooper Cup. if Cooper Cup gets there, um, Diggs could be there, Henry could be there. So many people, dude. Like that's the beauty of this league everyone has a wild card pick they can make in the first round yeah it's it's tough it's man. all about who you like who you think's gonna have a good year exactly and, and, you know some of these guys may take a step back you, you're wondering if Devonte adams has a step back you're wondering if, if derrick henry takes a step back um but you're risking passing over one of those guys you know, thinking some the younger guy's gonna do better, yeah. but the the veterans just are just solid. I know, like the risk may equal the reward in some of these cases. Like yeah. it, it, even though they're on the decline of their career, they're still gonna put up good numbers. Exactly. Um, which I mean, with Jake here at this pick, I think this is a, a I think this is a big B. John Robinson. Oh, pick I agree. Here. Jake uh, makes likes to make those uh, wild card picks, uh, unproving guys, or just uh, under the radar. But I mean, I wouldn't say Bijan's under the radar. He is. Uh, yeah, he's gonna be. He a was a great there. running back. Uh, no, to partner him with uh, Patterson and. Uh, Algier. Yeah, Algier. That that's a solid running back room right there. Yeah, they um, they run the ball more than anyone else in the league last year. Yeah. And a lot of that is because one, they couldn't throw the ball worth it, worth a darn. I know. I mean, and they had good receivers terrible. too. Like Drake London is a great receiver. Drake London's a promising guy. He is. Um, good fourth they or fifth round pick. They do have the Kyle Pitts, who's been disappointing yeah. thus far. Yeah. Do you think somebody drafts Pitts in the first uh, three rounds this uh, year? No, I don't. I think there's too many tight ends that have proven themselves for him to be a top tight end pick. I don't even oh, think he's going to be a top. I think he'll be top ten in the tight ends, but I think I mean, he'll that's be outside not saying of the top much. five. Yeah. yeah, that's he's gonna not be saying much. the top five. He's probably gonna be around eight, seven or eight. It depends I'd, on. I'd also go eight or nine. There. Yeah, I, I, there's so many tight ends that I have above him right now. Facts. Um, I mean, in my book, there's only uh, two guys I'm putting in the top two. Well, yeah, there's there's only two guys that are worth that. Uh, yeah. That I think. Um, and somehow I always end up with the number two in most of my leagues. Yeah, uh, yeah, we'll see about the, this year though. So hey. that, and after Jake, it's me. Um, yeah, who do you take, Zach? I want to hear. It's interesting because it just depends on how some of this board falls. You know, I like yeah. the running backs here towards the end of the round. If Henry gets there, uh, maybe a Saquon Barkley. If Nick Chubb gets there, um, if a Bijan falls that far, I, I would probably be open to taking a, a running back here. But, you know, like I said, a lot of things can happen here. If a, if one of the, those elite elite receivers falls to me, Cooper Cup, 
uh, a Stefan Diggs, or, or you know, I might even take a look at Devontae Adams here. Um, it's it, it honestly just depends on how it falls, who's left, because you know I have a pick, you know, um, two picks later um, yeah. after that. So it, it's kind of just a, a thinking man's game at that point, uh, being this far down in the draft. You can't really have a set number one guy. I mean, you can set him, but. It's I tough, mean, man. in the first round, it's it's all about who you like. Exactly. And so it's not necessarily about the ranking that the ESPN gives you. It, it, it's it's a gut feeling type thing. So it is, and uh, I probably won't know until you know probably around Bradbury picking live is when I'll probably have you know my sights set on a guy. Yeah. And then hopefully he's there between Clint and Jake, but it's a it's a thinking game from there. I think. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, I'm not giving away my draft strategy, boys. That's nice fine. Try. You I, got, I got Will to do it, but I'm not giving away my plans. I mean, right? it's not like I have a choice. <laughs> yeah, and then that I mean last last pick, Marcus. Hi, buddy. Um, he's got back to back picks. He's probably gonna go with a running back and a receiver. He'll have his pick of whoever's there. Or he might just go quarterback. Or you know he might just say screw it, I'll go quarterback or defense maybe. I don't know. <laughs> you know what sounds good? Patrick Mahomes and the Baltimore defense. Yeah. I mean, that's those are two high quality picks for yeah. a, a caliber player like that. I would think that's yeah. probably his best draft move he could make. Yeah. Um, <laughs> nah, I'm, I am personally just talking. You, know, I don't think our unbiased commissioner <laughs> is, but you know, personally, <laughs> I wouldn't take that. Yeah, I mean, it's all it's all fun and games. It's all fun and games until you know you guys can beat me in the postseason, and which yeah. only a couple people have. Spencer Bradbury and Dylan Akel are the only people to beat me in a postseason. Losers. But um. Um. No, who's keeping track, right? Yep. Who's keeping track? Uh, certainly not Zach. Not me. I know no, that for all. sure. <laughs> but that wraps up the first round. Yeah. Um, I think after the first round, it's going to be a lot of it's going to be a free for all. Picking who who you like, who you th- expecting to have a good year, but yeah. Um, it's a free for all, like you said. Yeah. It is an absolute free for all. Players drop because we are doing it live. You're not necessarily looking at your screen the whole time. You're looking at the little sheets, and you're just trying to find a name that you like or recognize. And guys can fall. So you got to pay attention. You got to see who's picking who where because you could spend your whole time trying to pick a player that already got picked, and then next thing you know, you're panicking because you got 10 seconds left. You end up picking a tight end, you know. Right. You end up picking, uh, you know, uh, a wide receiver that's hurt. You know what I mean? So you got to pay attention. I mean, I know my, one of my first live drafts. I personally drafted Kareem Hunt in a year where I thought, okay, this was a steal of a pick. Then as soon as I drafted him, I realized. Oh darn! He's suspended for eight games. <laughs> yeah, you gotta you gotta Those, do your research a little bit. You gotta yeah. find out who's getting hurt, who's a rising star, who's declining, stuff like that. Which yeah, you know, I feel like some of these guys are doing the research. Where I feel like some of them think they can skid by on some of their knowledge, and it'll look they'll, they'll be exposed. They'll be exposed for sure. Oh yeah. Um. So hey, I think as we kind of wrap up this uh, the show, um. Just want to reiterate some things. Pay your league fees, gentlemen. Pay up. Do your due diligence and um, bring some uh, loser suggestions. Yeah, and boys, just be ready. It's going to be a fun season. Yeah. And get ready. And again, we will be doing some interviews, some draft interviews. So be at the draft a little early so we can do some things and have some fun um, and make some good content for our next video. And come respectable, boys. Yeah. Remember, two of us do work there, so yes. Uh, yes, we gotta treat Top Golf with the most respect. All the employees, all right. We're gonna tip well. We're gonna be respectful. We're not gonna leave it all dirty and gross and stuff, um, because we had it last year. They loved us. That's why they're having us back again. Exactly. So we want to keep that re- re- relationship good. Yep. And like always, boys, this is the Commissioner's Podcast. This is the Commissioner's Podcast.